Hello people, it is I once again, we are going to look, this is a, the long haul, you're in for the long haul on this one, but hopefully you'll learn a lot, in fact we'll learn together. Now, uh, I was watching a program the other day on Japanese, I wanted to know what it was like when Japanese lost the war, Japan lost the war, because it's gone from uh a emperor divine right of rule system with the shogunate and it went very much very much how a, like a feudal system if you like and it's gone you know it's a very much a change now so the americans have invaded this country is now surrendered and america now has its uh, ability to uh, enforce its will upon the conquered nation so it's a very, very, very difficult time, both for the Americans and for the Japanese. You know, there's a lot of, like, war hatred that's probably unsettled, and yet now the occupying force comes in and tries to rebuild, reconstruct a, a country, essentially, had been burnt to the ground by loads of incendiary and nuclear weapons. So think of the two nations. Yeah, and, and technically England is in, involved in this in some degree. So you have England and the common law, uh, Magna Carta, the Bill of Rights, which obviously led to uh, American independence and the Declaration of Rights done by the Americans, and that led to the, um, the, the, the American Constitution, which enshrines a lot of laws, uh, natural laws, that the government may never um, uh, in, uh, in, uh, infringe on the word I'm looking for. So, Japan, you're a peasant, you're a noble, you're an emperor, or you're, or, and that's pretty much it. This is brilliant. So now they're going into a country with that system, having, this is from the Americans, so the Americans are going into a country with a feudal system, essentially, very similar to England, because America was born out of a feudal system. And now they're going to a country, it's like it's almost like they've reinvaded England, if you like, in one respect. But what they're actually doing, they're reinvading it Japan, which is a foreign people, a different, you know, different uh, species of people, a different religious culture, not Christian, and a different set of government. They have an emperor, a divine ruler. So it's almost like they're going back to the source. And now they have a, a, a duty to rebuild Japan as a conquered nation. But they also have their own interest to make sure that this country doesn't come up and start messing around in global affairs again. And hopefully by going through this constitutional document, you'll see some of the principles of common law, both in terms of the Bill of Rights, Magna Carta, uh, having influences on the American constitution, and now obviously all the legal, the legal boffins of the American uh, government and society. Uh, coming into Japan now and imposing, not imposing, well I suppose it is imposing, you defeated them at, at war, it is, it is imposing them upon... Uh, you're imposing it upon them, but then obviously they have to accept it. So, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say at the end of a barrel of a gun, but essentially, you know, you, you, you are imposing it at the end of the day, but obviously they, they assent to it in some manner. So this is going to be really interesting, seeing how the American belief system is being imposed upon the Japanese people, which in hindsight now has obviously been a great success to the Japanese economy and the Japanese uh, standard of living. Uh, so, but obviously, at the time, think of it as like you know that it may not have it may not have sat well. It could have gone anyway, you know. In 1947, I think when this was yeah 1947, there we are, just up here. When this came into effect in 1947, this could have gone either way. Very much like when the British left India, there probably should have been a huge war, but thankfully there wasn't. So like in this case, you know, the the Japanese could have rejected it in some respects. You know, they could have renounced their uh, their their assent to this document. So think about the American Constitution with this. Now think about where that came from. And obviously it's come from um, principles in Magna Carta and, and uh, the Bill of Rights. And Englishmen who actually, you know, declared independence, went rogue um, and decided to start the Americas up. So this all comes from the same, the same place in a roundabout way. You know, John Locke, Blackstone, you've got all those great people who, who founded America. And many more people all around before that. So we, so remember the American Constitution, we the people, yeah? So it's not we the American people, we the English people. 
we the former English people, we the Irish, we the Scottish, we the European people. So here it's, it's specifically said we the Japanese people. If I think of an American concept where you have African Americans, you have Mexican Americans, you probably had Japanese Americans during the Second World War, all those concentration camps and things. So they decided to define them as we the Japanese people. Which, which is interesting because, you know, if you compare that to the American Constitution, it's we the people because it's self-evident. We are the people. Yeah, we the people. But when it's being prescribed for someone else, they say, well, you're not people. You're Japanese people. So that's why in their own constitution for themselves, they've started we the Japanese people. When you, if you can't, I hope you're kind of getting it. It's like in the American Constitution, when the people are writing a constitution for themselves, they don't define themselves as we the American people. No, it's just we the people. So it's, it's just an... Just, Four words in, you've already discovered, oh, we're crowbarring in here to differentiate these people from our own. Acting through our duty, this is the preamble, essentially. Uh, uh, acting through our duly elected representatives in the national diet. Now, diet is basically a parliament, okay? I looked up that word. If you etymologize it, it basically means parliament, which is an interesting word. So how they've come to use this as a way for, to, for the Japanese to describe their own parliament instead of using parliament. Or, you know, if they've decided to use a diet, maybe it's easier for them to say, I don't know. Uh, determined that we shall, sometime in the future, secure for ourselves and our prosperity the fruits of peaceful working together, cooperation, with all nations and the blessings of liberty throughout this land, people, land, and resolve that never again shall we be visited with the horrors of war through the action of government. Do proclaim that sovereign power resides with the people and do firmly establish this constitutional government. Oh, oh sorry. Do firmly establish this constitution, capital C, yeah, because it, it says duties. The duties are for this government. This government exists on the basis of this. This is the rule book that governs this. So there is no government unless it obeys this. Okay, and if at any time the government does not obey this, it is it is essentially null and void government, or it can be challenged massively. Government is a sacred trust of the people. The authority now trust is amazing. Okay, so one, if if the government is a trust with the people. Then whoever's act is a corporation acting on behalf of the people for the, or for the benefit of the people. So the people have the property, okay? Everything is owned by the people and maybe to a lesser extent the, the emperor. Let's say the emperor and the people, all right? So the government exists for the benefit of the people and the emperor. For the smooth running of society, the, uh, the administration of justice, uh, for the protection of borders, the protection of people's private property, okay? So the government is in sacred trust to ensure that uh, to the people. So if at any time the government starts acting outside of this trust, i.e. breaching a trust, which anyone can do very easily, um, then, uh, you know, you can, you can uh, hold them to account with, pretty, with a suit. The authority for which is derived from the people, the powers of which are exercised by the representatives of the people. So this is kind of like the for the people of the, of the people by the people, but they've obviously reworded it, yeah? Representatives of the people and the benefits of which are enjoyed by the people. Of the people. Well, they put from or for the people. By the people. So you can see how that's been reiterated. It's been expanded, but it's been, uh, it's been um, uh, expressed more clearly. This is a universal principle of mankind. Now, mankind is a religious word. It's, you know, God created man, so hence we are mankind. So this is a, a Christian value, essentially, being, I wouldn't say imposed is the right word, but it's almost like give a Christian value that we are accepting that the Japanese people are of mankind. Interesting. So that's interesting because, you know, yeah, all right, let's just, let's just take it for it. Is that you can go into that all kind, in all kinds of ways. Upon which this constitu constitution is founded, we regret and revoke all constitutions, anything, laws, anything that came before this, ordinances, these are commands from the emperor, 
and rescripts. So re would be a, re a re doing again. Scripts is writing a rewriting in conflict herein. So if they try to rewrite rescript in conflict herein, so anyone tries to change this thing, it becomes immediately null and void. This is it as far as it's concerned. It's an interesting concept. We, the Japanese people, desire peace for all time and are deeply conscious of the high ideals control on human. Now we've gone to human. So we've gone from Japanese people to mankind to human relationship. And we have determined to preserve our society and existence, trusting in the justice and faith interesting, of the peace-loving peoples of the world. So we're putting our faith in dare I say Jesus, <laughs> we're putting our faith in the peace-loving peoples of the world, whoever they may be, as long as you're peaceful, we'll put our trust in you, do not break this trust, if other people break this trust, does that mean, like let's say very topical now is North Korea, Our North, well, mind you, you're not having faith in a, they're not really peace-loving people, so you can't really put your trust in them, we desire to occupy and on an honoured place in an international society striving for the preservation of peace and the banishment of tyranny and slavery, oppression and intolerance for all time from the earth. We recognise that all people, again people, gone from human to people, of the world have the right to live in peace free from fear and want. How many times have I gone over this want? Just did the Parliament video about want, needs and wants. So, you know, wants not, people. We believe that no nation is responsible to itself alone, but that laws of political morality, morality, now who sets morality? Morality is quite often a private belief. And where do private beliefs come? Some sort of religious belief, some sort of private outlook on life. But the laws of political morality are universal and that obedience to such laws is incumbent upon all nations who would sustain their own sovereignty and justly their sovereign sovereign relationship with other nations. This is interesting. This is very anti <laughs> put that in front of a globalist. We, the Japanese people, pledge our national honour to accomplish these high ideals and purposes for all our with all our resources. That's people and land and resources. I think that's a very interesting preamble. So first of all, the Americans have got to deal with the uh, elephant in the room, which is the King of England. Oh, I mean the Japanese Emperor. So here we have the Japanese Emperor. Now, they've, they, I think here they're trying to um, mothball the Emperor and have him like a... He's a head of state, very much like the English uh, monarch. Uh, but essentially, you're head of state in name and power, but with no... But, you know, almost like under lock and key. The Emperor shall sometime in the future be the symbol of the state and of the unity of the people oh, capital p for people here that's interesting that's very interesting state and people the people with responsibilities or a duty let's say to this constitution deriving his position from the will of the people with whom resides sovereign power so again they're saying look you are the emperor but at all times, the power is with the people. People power. And don't ever forget that, buddy. Don't start being silly and uh, overstepping and getting any delusions of grandeur that any time the people aren't the people in power, aren't the ones with the power. The imperial throne, again capitalised, shall be a dynast shall be dynastic, so dynasty, so it goes through family, and succeeded to in accordance with the imperial house law passed by the, the parliament. Article. These are all the articles, obviously. In, uh, in the advice of the advice and approval of the cabinet shall be required for all acts of the emperor in matters of state, and the cabinet shall be responsible therefore. The advice and approval of the cabinet shall be required for all acts of the emperor. So the advice and approval of the cabinet for all acts of the emperor in matters of state. So if the emperor wants to do anything, he has to approach the cabinet, which presumably is the cabinet of the diet, so they're close they're close people to the prime minister or the president, for example. Uh, and the cabinet shall be responsible. So once the cabinet have advised, the cabinet take on the responsibility, the liability, so the emperor's not liable. 
The Emperor shall perform only such acts in matters of state that are provided for in this constitution and shall not have powers related to the government. So the government separating almost like the separation of the, the head of state with the, with the running of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the government. The Emperor may delegate the performance of his acts in matters of state as may be provided by law. So if the government, if the Emperor wants to say, you know what, you do all that, get on with it. When, in accordance with the Imperial House Law, a regency is established, the regent shall perform his acts in matters of state in the Emperor's name. And so they just say if he delegates, you know, he's doing it in the Emperor's name. The Emperor shall appoint the Prime Minister, very similar to England, where the Queen actually picks the Prime Minister, which is bizarre. So, you know, the, the, the idea that, they, you know, like a, an elected party would have to send someone in to meet the Queen. So if they haven't brushed their teeth on mo that, that morning or haven't shaved or are uh, most rude to the Queen, they say, it's not you, buddy, <laughs> uh, as designated by the Parliament. So the Parliament will put someone forward, but the Emperor will appoint them. So if the diet, if the Emperor sees that the Prime Minister is a douchebag, the Emperor says, try again. The Emperor shall appoint a Chief Judge. Of the Supreme Court, and, uh, as designated by the cabinet. So again, the uh, are the, are the cabinet. So this is not the diet. This is the cabinet. I haven't really gone into what the cabinet is. Hopefully, it explains what a cabinet is in a minute. The emperor, with the advice and approval of the cabinet, shall perform the following acts in matters of state on behalf of the people. Oh my God! What the hell is that? Promul promulgation. Let's find out. Let's learn together. Holy macaroni. It's a middle French. Hmm, funny this. We'll go back to the, uh, the Normans. Uh, a public announcement. Okay. Let's go back to this. A public announcement of amendments of the Constitution, laws, cabinet orders and treaties. Okay. So they can amend it, but it's saying it can't amend it. That's weird. Typical legal stuff. Oh yeah. So just as a, as as a a bit of information, this is this is quite possibly. I'm not sure, but this could possibly be a legal document. And I have no legal understanding whatsoever. So take this as you will. I'm just reading hieroglyphs on the screen, and you are listening to electronic mystical voices in your ears that may or may not exist. Convocation of diet con together vocation like a vocation is that hang on, let's have a look at this. This is where shit gets real. Convocation assembly of persons. A calling together. All right, to call with the voice. Calling together of the diet. Okay, okay, I get it. Parliament. Just again. Dissolution, I think that's just, you know, dissolving something, getting rid of uh, the House of Representatives, proclamations and general elections of members of the Diet, so that he can declare a general election. Very similar to the Queen, I think. The Queen calls a general election, I believe. Uh, a, a testation, a, test, a testament, attested of the appointment or dismissal of members of state and other officials as provided for by law, and the full powers and credentials of ambassadors and ministers. So if he's, someone gets sacked in a significant role, I believe the Emperor will do it. Attestation of general and special amnesty. Communications of punishment, reprival and restoration of rights. I suppose in maybe if there's martial law, you could have a restoration of rights. Yeah. So he'll say, look, we've got to do this, we've got to do that. And now I, you know, restoration of rights would be like martial law's over. Awarding honours. National treasure. Attestation of instruments of ratification and other diplomatic documents as provided for by law. <laughs> getting all very heavy. Receiving foreign ambassadors and ministers, obviously, like the Queen would have state state visit of people. Uh, and performance of ceremonial functions. All right. That was a horrible act. Was that Article 7? Holy crap. Article 8. No property can be given to or received by the Imperial House, nor can any gifts be made therefrom without the authorization of a diet. So no property can be given to. So you can't bribe the emperor. So nothing can be given to the emperor unless it goes via the parliament. That's interesting. There's probably corruption, is it? Trying to stop corruption. Influence. Yeah, I suppose you could say it's more about the influence, really. Uh, renunciation of wars. This is basically Japan not going to war anymore. Who would have thought that? Aspiring sincerely to the international peace based on justice and order. 
the Japanese actually order was a very interesting word I just looked up so order is because you know order order I like to order something because order as a verb a body persons living under religious discipline and here it specifically mentions that it's to do with the, the crusader knights you know the order of Saint John the order uh, the order of the garter the order of of, um, how was it, St. John and the Order of, there's another order, there's two orders, but the Order of Knights Crusade, Knights Templar, there we are, Knights Templar, so the Crusader Knights, so it's interesting that that somehow ended up in the uh, Japanese constitution, but hey, in order to accomplish the aim of the preceding paragraph, land sea and air forces as well as other war potential will never be maintained will never be maintained that's interesting because it is being maintained at the moment the right of belligerence ah that's warmongering i looked at that word before that's warmongering so the right of warmongering of the state will not be recognized by well, yeah but that's really hard to enforce because if the people want to if the people want the ruckus they're not going to stop the government doing it so even if that's unconstitutional i mean the only people who can enforce that would be america again Chapter 3. Rights and duties of the people. Hmm, capitalization. The people as defined by us. So the conditions necessary for being a Japanese national shall be determined by the parliament, the Japanese parliament. The people shall not be prevented from enjoying any of the fundamental human rights. Human rights. Hang on a minute. Now, if we go to the human uh, dec declaration of human human rights I'm pretty sure this was well after oh it's 1948 so maybe what is the likelihood of 1948 the Universal General Assembly in Paris the 10th of December 1948 so that was technically where are we We're here 10 article 10 or 11 that's a year and a half. This is a year and a half before the Declaration of Human Rights. So they can't be presumed to be referring to these human rights as the human rights as defined by that European document. These fundamental human rights guaranteed um, to the people by this constitution shall be conferred upon the people of this and future generations as eternal and inviolate rights. So the, the, the fundamental, so they're talking about human rights guaranteed to the people by this constitution, capital C again, should be conferred to the people as a future generation of violence. So that's interesting. So they're saying that the people will have the human rights. Interesting. The freedoms and rights guaranteed to the people by this constitution shall be maintained by the cons constant endeavour of the people who shall refrain from any abuse of these freedoms and rights and sh right and rights and shall always be responsible for utilizing them for their public welfare all of the people shall be respected as individuals individuals see individual and human is the same thing i, I don't think i can i can get this up again i should really because it's it's worth doing uh now uh Oh, it was in one of my previous videos, but basically it was a it was a it was a, a, a definition of um, person, person being a human, a child. It's 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 an adult human, in infants infant at any stage of development, and their class is infant, so infantile. So this 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 thing that they're defining here is infantile. So. All other people shall be respected as individuals. So we're saying, right, the people now they're conflating people now. So people now are respected as individuals, infantiles. Their right to life, liberty, and and pursuit of happiness shall, to the extent that is not that that, that it does not interfere with public welfare, be supreme consideration in legislation and in other government affairs. So let the kids do what they want. <laughs> All of the people are equal under the law. So now we're talking back to people now. 
are equal under the law and there shall be no discrimination in political, economic or social relations because of race, greed, sex, social status or family origin. That's probably something important about, you know, fat, certain families being of noble classes. Creed, sex, race, creed, social status, status again. Peers and peerage shall not be recognised. No such thing as no such thing as noble noble class anymore in Japan. The peerage, it's very much a noble class, like shoguns and god knows well. So, if anyone thinks they're a shogun in Japan, apparently not. No privilege shall accompany any award of honour. It's no privilege. So any honour given to a person or, or people does not give them privileges, decorations or distinction, nor shall any such award be valid beyond the lifetime of the individual uh, who now holds or thereafter may receive it. Actually, individual is the one I want to look at because I actually etymologise this as well. An individual is literally a thing. A single object or a thing. So when you be very careful calling yourself, I'm in. You know, if someone says, "Are you an individual?" You basically, "Are you a thing?" Yeah, I'm a thing. Well, thanks for confirming you're a thing. And then in their own head, they'll they'll determine what thing you are because you just said you're a thing. A single human being, maybe. And then again, I've already covered human being, being an infantile member of the Homo sapien race, the Homo sapien species. Who now holds or hereafter may receive it. 15. People have the inalienable right to choose their public officials and to dismiss them. Ooh, that's very interesting. All public officials are servants of the whole community and are not in any group thereof. Right, so remember this is all coming from America, all these points. So think about the American Constitution. Where does America get the idea of this? A lot of these things are ringing true of the American Constitution. There's a few little caveat that be the right word um in relation to dealing with the japanese but uh, look at it from the angle is that you've got a japanese system that has no clue of the american constitution people have no they don't care about the american constitution they don't know about the american constitution women have zero rights in in japanese culture pre-war and now they're being told oh you have all the rights that you want and you can also vote and all this other stuff it's a massively culturally you know changing uh, event of losing that war Probably some people are very happy about it. Um, uh, public officials service. All public officials are servants to the whole community and not of any group thereof. So they don't they don't serve a specific like in Japan it'd be like the yakuza. So public officials do not serve the yakuza. They serve all people equally, which technically means of the whole community. So you could, they, they do have a duty to the Yakuza in that respect, but not exclude, not above or below anyone else. That's interesting. Um, universal adult suffrage, hang on, suffrage, is a guaranteed regard to, is that, is that with relation to woman? Womanhood? Universal adult suffrage is guaranteed, suffragette, that's a horrendous word attached to, <sighs> oh no, intercessory, yeah, without gender. Okay, but it's just based it's based around gender. So, yeah, anyone can become an elected public official. In all elections, secrecy of ballots shall not be violated. So you have the right to vote in secrecy. I actually think people should should declare what they vote. I know it can be held against them, but uh, I suppose it's their private. Yeah, it's their private thoughts, their private opinions, so it wouldn't probably would never happen in law. But I'm I'm kind of for a system where you shouldn't be, you should live in a system where, regardless of what you vote, there should be no recourse for it. And in that respect, it should be it should be proud and declared uh, declared of. But obviously, in reality, maybe that doesn't happen. So you have the rights to secrecy. A voter shall not be answerable publicly or privately for the choice he has made. See there, there we are confirming again. It's absolute private property decision your thoughts your mind your, your secret decisions should not be held against you every person shall have the right of peaceful petition for a rejection of damages to grievances we use grievances that's what parliament's main this is exactly the the, the function of government is as above and here every person shall have the right for peaceful petition for the redress of damages for the remove Oh, for the removal of public officials, so the people can can uh, petition for the removal of like a, a prime minister or or, or, an eight, or a government official. 
for the enactment, repeal or amendment of law, ordinances, commands or regulations and for other matters, nor shall any person in any way be discriminated against for supporting such a petition. So people can petition government or the diet without fear of recourse. And that, that's, that harks back to uh, uh, the Declaration of Rights and the Bill of Rights in um, 1689 English Revolution, the Glorious Revolution, in fact, apparently glorious. Every person may sue for redress as provided by law, from the state or from public entities. So you can sue the state and you can sue public entities. Public entities being corporations. In case he has suffered damage through a legal act of any public official. So if a public official, a policeman, acts illegally outside of his guidelines and causes damage, allow or su even if it's allowed to be done, suffered, allowed, um, whether it be a private or state, you see, sometimes you can read this back, he has a redress to sue every person. That's interesting. It's good when you read these backwards sometimes. So yeah, so yeah, we can sue, they can sue the state for the actions of officials who are, who are acting illegally behalf of state. So the state becomes liable for not training, monitor or discipline the state official. Uh, so that would be in the course of damages. So any damages an official does can be recovered from the state. And in relation to that individual, now I say individual, the man or woman or the Japanese people, or the people, should we say, in acting in that official capacity also has a has a debt to pay as well. So you can claim a debt from the, um, the public official but you claim that from the state, and then you can claim also from the, the individual acting privately, or being a douchebag, because the state has a liability because he didn't train and monitor and discipline uh, that put that man, and then the man himself acted like a douchebag. So then you can sue him. So it's not suing twice; you're suing once for the the complete thing. Um, or at least there's one claim of damages, but just dealt with separately in two, two claims. No person shall be held in bondage of any kind. Ooh, no kinky bondage in Japan. <laughs> of any kind, yeah. So if, if you ever have kinky bondage sex in Japan, re refer them to Article 18. <laughs> Involuntary servitude, so that's slavery. So not uh, being forced to do something uh, against your will, except as punishment for a crime. Is prohibited so unless you you know like penal penal crime setting right your public debts freedom of thought and conscience shall not be violated that's an interesting word uh freedom of religion is gar i thought it said not guaranteed <laughs> so freedom of religion is guaranteed to all no religious organization shall receive any privileges from the state nor exercise any political authority no person shall be that's interesting with the shinto buddhist thing going on in japan that's very interesting Yeah, I mean, I'm just talking from personal experience here, or private experience, personal private experience in Japan. No person shall be compelled to take part in any religious act, ceremony, rite or practice. <laughs> I did it voluntarily, but by all means, you're, you're welcome to say no thank you. The state and its organs, this is a good Frankenstein's monster, organs, we need some arms, we need some heads, we need some legs, we need a brain, we need a voice, these are all organs of the state so whatever whatever organs the state requires shall refrain from religious education or other religious activity the state and its organs that's interesting the state and shall refrain from religious education or any other religious activity that's very odd This is what I've I've covered this before. The state state in that in the rape case with um was it Emily, uh, the video I did with Emily I can't remember her surname, I think it was Emily, uh, and I was talking about her state of being at the time. She was, she was referring to the state or the newspaper article was at least referring to the state of her her being, and this is why I say state is a, is such a trans transitive word. It goes all over the place. State. And especially when you start sticking a capital S on it as well. So, yeah, 
don't use state or at least if you're going to use it it has to be concise and here it is concise because it's got a capital S so not uh, organs actually let's look at organs shall we we could even look at state but I'm pretty sure I know what organs mean but it's just like state organs genitals <laughs> reproductive organs but oh, not plural let's, let's get organ plural a musical instrument implement Tool. So state tools. I think that's that's probably a reasonable transaction. So now let's go to state and uh, brace yourself. If you've still made it this far, congratulations. You're right. you're sticking in there. You're learning. State <sighs> to set in a position. Let's go to state. That's a verb. So that's a state as in a verb doing it. So we're not doing that. We're doing it now. So, uh, a society. Circumstances. Surroundings in that respect. Position of the society. Temporary attributes of a person or thing. Conditions. Temporary. I suppose it is temporary because nothing lasts forever. Positions. And I suppose in the constitution they're probably almost admitting that in a respect. Yeah, well, you can't change this constitution. Anything that changes this constitution becomes invalid. But in terms of the state, which is ever changing, um, <laughs> it's it's not so static. Standing rank, public order, community organization, political organizations, a semi-independent political entity under a federal authority, uh, one of the bodies politic, hmm. there's all kinds of things, mental and emotional conditions, you see that has nothing to do with state or federal being, so it's, and that's quite an early one as well, Latin word, start. German as well, Germanic physical condition regarded to formal structure. Again, that's not formal structure. That's definitely not necessarily a living being. And then in the 13th, attested for a mental or emotional condition, attested from 1530s. So again, that's coming much later. Yeah. So I think this is all about having a secular government. I think that's basically saying a secular government. Freedom of assembly and association. Well, this has been going on forever. Uh, an association, as well as speech. Freedom of association, assembly and speech. Press and all other forms of expression are guaranteed. So you can express yourself in a free way. Capital freedom, though. <laughs> um, yeah, so you're free to say what you want to, but you'll bear the consequences for any free speech. Remember that, you always, you always better, you can't go around blabbing off what you like. But you're free to do it. But obviously, then once you've said it, you're going to pay the price for it. No censorship shall be maintained. Really? Shall be made Really? Nor shall the secrecy of any means of communication be vi Wow. I'm just thinking of um, the Fukushima disaster with this one. It's coming to my mind. No censorship shall be maintained. This is probably censorship of the peoples. And their ability to tra tra communicate with each other in secret. Okay, so that's okay. So yeah, so this is from the people's point of view. I, I believe it's not from the state's point of view. Every person shall have freedom to choose and change his residence. Hmm, okay, and to choose his occupation to the extent that it does not interfere with the public welfare. Freedom of all persons to move to a foreign country and to divest themselves of their nationality shall be inviolated. So that's interesting. Because the reason I say that is that Japan, Japan has a thing at the moment where you can you can you can't have dual citizenship. You're either Japanese or you're not. So the freedom of all persons. So if I'm a Japanese pers uh, you know, citizen, which is a person of the state, freedom of all citizens or person or anything really, persons is a thing. It's like an individual. Freedom of all in persons to move to a foreign country and to divest themselves of their nationality should not be violated. So they have the freedom to divest themselves. But Japan has a thing where you uh, you have to choose your nationality. So you can't, like, let's say you've got like an American kid and a an, uh, Japanese, like a dual nationality, so American Japanese passport. When the kid grows up, they have to choose, in Japan, they have to choose whether they're going to be a Japanese or an American citizen. I don't think they're allowed. They're not necessarily allowed dual nationalities. But from what I'm reading here, the freedom of all people to move to a foreign country and they have the freedom to divest if they wish to. It doesn't necessarily... I mean, obviously, they can they can massage 
laws themselves. Uh, divest themselves of their nationality shall not be inviolate. So they have the freedom to leave it, but I, I don't. I'm not reading that as the freedom to, as as being forced to be removed. Academic freedom is guaranteed. Whatever. Marriage shall be based on the mutual consent of both sexes, and it shall be maintained through the mutual cooperation, working together <laughs> with the equal rights of husband and wife as the basis. With regard with regards to choice of spouse, property rights, inheritance, choice of domiciled living, divorce, and other matters pertaining to marriage and a family, all shall be enacted from the standpoint of individual, uh, a thing of digni dignity individual dignity yeah, an individual human being dignity an individual human being's dignity and the essential equality of the sexes okay all right fair enough all people have the right to maintain the minimum standards of wholesome and cultural living wholesome and cultural living in all spheres of life the state shall use its endeavors for the promotion and extension of social welfare and security and and the of public health. All people shall have the right to receive an equal education, so right to education, that's blah, 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 blah. all people shall have the obligation, all people, all people, people, right, okay, shall be obligated to have all boys and girls under their protection receive ordinary education as provided for by law. Such compulsions of education shall be free. So boys and girls aren't people? Interesting. All people shall have the right and the obligation to work. They have not only a right to work, but they have an obligation to work. Holy crap. That explains Japanese have a real mentality towards that. Standards for wages, hours, rest, and other working conditions shall be fixed by law. Children shall not be exploited. Define exploited? <laughs> Again, children, as defined by the state. The, work, the right of work is to organize and to bargain and act collectively is guaranteed. So we're talking about... Uh, uh, unions here. Now I have no idea what unions are like in Japan. I'm not even sure they're aware that they exist, but by all means people in Japan, you have the right to have a union. The right to own a whole property, the magic word is invi inviolable. Property rights shall be defined by law, so that capital property rights shall be defined by law in conforming with the public welfare property uh, private property may be taken for public use upon a just compensation. That is as old as the hills. Uh, the people shall be liable to taxation as provided. Oh, really? Holy shit sticks. The people shall be liable to ta taxation as provided by law. This, uh, this constitution says they have a duty to pay. So this constitution has a duty to pay taxation. When you think... The, the barons are a bunch of tax revolutionists. You know, they basically wanted their shit. They didn't want to pay it for free or give up their stuff, possessions for free. They wanted assurances from the king. And then the Bill of Rights, uh, so Declaration of Rights and the Bill of Rights, um, I'm sure it says something about no tax without representation. Uh, or that may even be in the, the American Constitution because the Americans are a bunch of tax protesters. And now here we are, the tax protesters are imposing tax rules upon the people of Japan. I think that's hypocrisy. I think that's a bit naughty. Uh, people here, obviously it's a bit different in terms of like being able to be represented, like no tax without representation. So here, I, I didn't read, I didn't really see an above whether they had a choice not to be represented and, and, and uh, manage their own affairs. But it's, I see by the obligation to work, you have an obligation to work, and that people shall, I mean, you could argue the word shall, <laughs> be liable to taxation as provided by law. Shall be, that's interesting. No person shall be deprived of life or liberty, nor shall, it's a terrible word, shall, uh, any other criminal penalty to be imposed except according to procedures established by law, which will be established by the diet, obviously. No person shall be denied the right access to courts. Very important. And it says person, yeah? Because it's talking about persons, whether you be a people acting in a person. You could act as a person when you go to court. You'd be acting as the plaintiff, if you like, or the prosecutor. That would be your person. But more importantly, you've got things like corporations. So no corporation shall be denied access or the right of access to court. Right of access. That is, 
that's the, that's the axis is a brilliant word actually let's 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 just make that clear because access you know when you say access all areas right think of the terminology of access access all areas i don't know if you have um, any other kind of can i access this library yeah access Uh, an onslaught. Hang on, have I spelt it wrong? Access. Okay. Uh, to approach, to go, to move, to withdraw. Right. So you have the you have the right to approach. To cut uh, here, a Latin accessus. Right. A coming to. So I have the right to come to the library, approach it. A way of approach to entrance, to enter the library, to approach it, to go, to move, to withdraw, to and to leave. So you have the right to go in. Go to, and get out of. So and and within that you have the, you have the access to use. So you're free to come, go, use, and leave. Come, use, and go as you please. That's what access means. It's it's basically total. It's almost like freedom. You have total freedom to to go in, access, and use. So that's what court means. So you have free access in. Uh, I wouldn't say, but sometimes it's free access. Um, but uh, who knows? But anyway, so the access, the right of access. I have a right to access the courts. Very important, that is. No person shall be apprehended except on warrant. So warrant is the word of a good man. Issued by a competent judicial officer, which specifies the offence. This is, again, coming back to the American Constitution, with which the person is charged unless he's apprehended the uh, offence being committed. So you can have a warrant or uh, so, so apprehend, apprehended. So no, that's not arrested, though, is it? That's interesting. Should we go apprehend? Because it's not the right of arrest, isn't it, really? So this is a bit different. Apprehend. Appre. Yeah, it's a verb. Seize. With force, presumably. Uh, apprehend. Because you might say I'm apprehensive. Hmm. Take hold. Take hold. Seize, seize in the mind? Mm. Yeah, apprehensive. I suppose that was, that's what to, to grasp, to, to, to grab. Grasp uh, in the sense of the mind. Uh, grasp, take hold of physically from Latin, apprehend, uh, to take hold of, to grasp, to grip something, okay, to seize. So there we are. So they're talking about seizing people. So, yeah, so, so maybe seize. I think we use seize more often in our, in our language. Or in their language, shall we say? Uh, except upon warrant. Yeah. So it's either caught in the act or has to be authorised by appropriate judi judicial officer. Because if they make a mistake, someone's going to be liable for this. No person shall be arrested or detained without being at once informed of the charges against him. This is very American. Or without the immediate immediate privilege of counsel, your right to counsel. It doesn't say representation, it says a right to seek advice. So daddy, mummy, you have the right to call up your mummy or your daddy, or a lawyer, or a solicitor, barrister, whatever you like to call him. Nor shall he be detained without adequate cause. And upon demand of any person, such cause must be immediately shown upon the court. Habeas corpus! In the presence uh, and in his presence and the presence of the counsel. That's very good, see? That's kind of habeas corpus being explained there. Oh, shit. My phone's going off. Excuse my language. Uh, right. The right of all persons to be secured in their homes, papers, articles, and effects. This is this is classic constitutional stuff. Searches and seizures should not be prepared upon a warrant issued at adequate cause, in particular describing the place to be. This is straight out of the American Constitution. Or la la la. Or by Article 33, by Act of yes, as a warrant. Each, uh, each search or seizure shall be made upon separate warrant issued by a competent judicial officer each search every single thing every single one not 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 bundled together in one big fashion uh, this kind of harks back to Carl Lentz and and uh, making claims each claim stands on its own you don't you don't merge them all together you have one claim for this one claim for that one warrant for this one warrant for that so if there's a uh, mistake in any individual case of the warrants then that warrant and whoever's responsible for that particular warrant will be held accountable to it and not, not like the whole thing being thrown out as a as a frivolous or erroneous act right the uh, the infliction of torture by a public official and cruel punishments is absolutely forbidden <laughs> wow okay in all criminal cases the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy 
and public trial by the impartial by an impartial tribunal. Wow, because that's Roman law. That is tribunals are Roman. It's not a jury. There's no right. What about? So there's no right to a jury here. This is interesting. So in all criminal cases, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial by an impartial tribunal. So a tribunal being uh, a Roman, it's Roman, if you just Google tri tribunal, my understanding of it is, is the magistrate sits at the top and he's there to ensure that the plebs don't get capitalised on, you know, uh, taken advantage of. And that's about it, really. Um, he shall be permitted full opportunity to examine all witnesses. So this is... Um, uh, the uh, defendant's right to cross-examine. Um, and he shall have the right of compulsory process for obtaining witnesses. Oh, so he, can call, he has the right to call witnesses. On behalf, at the public, exp on his behalf, at public expense. Ooh, how many people knew that? So you can call people on behalf of your defense at the cost of the public. Purse. All right, interesting. At all times, the accused shall have the assistance of competent counsel who shall, if the accused is unable to secure the same of his own efforts, be assigned to by the state. Competent counsel. So just making sure you're getting competent counsel. And this is like your right to be, rep you know, your right to be represented in legal matters. If it is a legal matter, which I presume a crime criminal act probably will be. Uh, no person shall be compelled to testify against himself. Crucial thing. Remember, this is Japan, right? Japan is now getting laid on a whole thousand, yeah, near on a thousand years worth of uh, uh, common law principles laid on it, based on customs which are ancient, and also the the, uh, the 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 legal society that's developed over time. So now they're coming into Japan, which may have no culture, understanding, or knowledge or education in this in this field. And within two years, they have to learn all this stuff and say, right, this is how it is now. Good, you know, Godspeed, get on with it, crack on. So, it, you know, there's all kinds of things being laid on Japan here, which, are, which may be completely alien and foreign to them. So in that respect, the American, you know, the way the Americans have to explain these points very specifically to the Japanese so that they kind of get it into their heads and their mentality, which, might, like I said, might be completely foreign and difficult for them to get their head around, like the idea of women writing and, and equal rights between men and women in here before the war, completely out of the, out of the window. So this is why it's a good document to see because it kind of has to explain it a little bit more. It has to go into a little bit more detail, but at all times keeping the language simple so that, you know, uh, aliens, outsiders, foreigners, idiots, whatever you want to call it, the Japanese newly conquered people can get their head around it, which is why it's good for morons like us, or should I say me, uh, just to just to look at it and go, ah, so these are the, the facets of law that are being enshrined in this constitution exist in the real world, if you like. Uh, where were we? Yeah, so no person should yeah, testify against themselves. Confessions made under compulsion, torture or threat or after prolonged arrest or detention shall not be admitted in evidence. That is fantastic. Because uh, uh, if you re recall my... Um, plea bargaining video that I did so think about it was oh, it was a plea bargaining that was the um, representation and I think it was the representation and com compulsion what was it representation video it's got a picture of Navinda Singh Saro so you think you know they, they put an arrest warrant out for you and you get arrested and then they put you in prison for a load of time to break you and that happened in the um, criminal criminal justice movie that was also linked with that video that I did this is the criminal justice uh, movie it's very good it's how you now some guy's been arrested on a suspicion of some weak evidence held in prison and the district uh, the, uh, well the attorney that's state sponsored is basically trying to just keep him going keep him going keep plea plea bargaining plea bargaining plea bargaining Let's just plead guilty plead guilty plead guilty please plead, plead, plead guilty plead guilty look we've got 90% off the prison time plead guilty take this you idiot um, but the guy is obviously innocent. He wanted to take it to trial. So um, here, getting any kind of plea deal for someone who's been in detention for an extended period of time shall not be admitted in, in evidence, which is very interesting. Because uh, if you go back to the Nevinder Singh Sauro contract, that I also included in that in that video, just bring it up and have a look at it. And you'll be able to find it. Um, you you will see that. 
one of the clauses that I went over was that if the judge decides that this is in, in, inadmissible or, or doesn't agree with this contract, it is a null and void. So the judge technically could have said, this guy's been in prison for a long time. I have no way of knowing that this is being, you know, I know, I know he, this guy's saying that it was no, there was no one influence done him, done to him to, to agree to this contract, to plea deal, plea bargain out. But he's been in prison so long, he's probably not of sound mind and he just wants to get out. He might be fearful. He might be, you know, there's all kinds of influences on this guy. I can't accept that. So that's why that clause was included, that the judge has the final say in the matter. So technically there may be a, 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 an obligation for a judge, especially in a tribunal sense, that, you know, I can't accept that because this guy's been put under some sort of, you know, torture, threat, compulsion, prolonged arrest, or detention. Yeah. No person shall be convicted of or punished in cases where the only proof against him is his own confession. Wow. Wow. That's really strong. You think of all the magistrates' courts in England where it's people going in and asking for 30, you know, if you plead early, you get 33% off your your time. So if you go in and just plead guilty, whatever the crime may be, it doesn't matter. But if you go in and plead guilty at the first instance, they offer you 33% off. If you do it at the second instance, it's like, uh, it might only be a quarter off or half off. So, but based on that, no person here shall be convicted. So even if, even if you confess here, yeah, I did it. No person shall be convicted or punished in cases where the only proof against him is his own confession. That is massive. Holy moly. No person shall be held. I think, is that, is that, um, I think that's a uh, corpus delecti. I think that's what that's called. Corpus delecti, where even if morons come forward and say, yeah, I shot JFK, I shot Kennedy. You know, the, the judge has to say, oh, really? I know you're saying you did it, but mm, maybe not. <laughs> you know, uh, no person shall be held criminally liable for an act which is which was lawful at the time it was committed or which he has been acquitted, nor shall he be held in double jet. That's, that's straight again out of American. So if it was lawful yesterday and unlawful today, he shouldn't be held, uh, he shouldn't be held liable for it. I don't have to wrap this up because times are clicking. But I, let's get into the juicy bit as well. <laughs> well let's crack on a little bit more. Um, right. No person shall be held like... Yeah, okay. Double jeopardy. A person in a case is acquitted after it has been arrested or detained may sue the state for a chance. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> Any person in the case... He's acquitted after he has been arrested or detained may sue the state for redress as provided for by law. Hello. <laughs> the, the parliament shall be the highest organ of state power. So this is the, just a... Okay, that's about the government. Let's ignore the government. The cabinet. Oh, there we are. So this is about the cabinet, if you want to read that. It'll just be like the Congress and Senate. Oh, the judiciary. The whole judicial power is vested in the Supreme Court and is such infer and in such inferior courts are established by law. No extraditionary tribunal shall be established, nor shall any organ or agency of the executive be given final judicial power. Oh, extraordinary tribunal, sorry, shall be okay. All judges shall be independent and exercised in their conscience and shall be bound by only by this constitution and the laws. Holy crap. So even if the government starts acting outside of the constitution, only the, ju the, the judiciary are only bound by this constitution. So they'll always bring it back to this constitution. This is how you this is how you hold the government to account. If they start acting outside of the constitution, the judiciary should have complete focus on this document. The Supreme Court is vested is vested with the rulemaking power under the Supreme Court is vested with the rulemaking power under which it determines the rules and procedures and of practices and the matters relating to attorneys. Blah, 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 blah. Public prosecutors shall be subject to rulemaking power. Public prosecutors. Okay. That's, yeah, okay. Uh, judges shall not be removed except by public impeachment unless judiciary declared mentally or physically incompetent. Yeah, right. So I think that sounds like it's a, it's a lifetime appointment then. Pretty much like a federal judge. So this is interesting. If you want to know how the people, the people work, you know, 
as as a judicial member. So this this could have some very simple um, uh, similarities to the American uh, federal courts. Uh, the Supreme Court is the court of last resort and the power to determine cons uh, constitutionality of law of any law. So any law has to be constitutional. So if they start changing things that are specifically expressed in the Constitution, it, it technically can be challenged. Ooh. Wow. Private courts. Finance, no, it gives a shit. Local self-government. This is really good section here. It's all about, you know, local people have the ability to make their own local laws. Absolutely lovely. It's almost like the states. You know, think about uh, America. You've got, like, you know, the whole the whole beast. But it's separated into lots of, you know, so the United States of America. So all the states have their own rights to make their own laws and stuff local to um, the people and the, uh, the powers that being within that area. Amendments. So amendments have to be started by the government, uh, the, the parliament, through a concurrent vote of two thirds, and has to be submitted to the people for ratification. So if they haven't gone to the people with a, like a referendum, then any changes to the constitution cannot be done. That's brilliant. And that has to go by the to the emperor, in the name of the people. So there we go. Uh, yeah, well, I've had to speak through the end of it because I'm running out of time. But look, you can just you really see some of the core principles of law, like screaming out of the pages here. Um, go through it in a lot of detail. Read some of the latest things that I've had to s s skim over. But the Japanese Constitution, as a modern piece of work to establish some of the some of the rights uh, that have probably been long established. Because remember, they have what what would a Japanese person know about habeas corpus prior to the war? They probably had no such thing. If you're in a, if you're in an imperial prison, you're in an imperial. It's like you know, it's divine right of rule. You're there because the emperor says so, and you ain't coming out until the emperor says otherwise. Yeah. So this is why it's the, a lot of the notions and and customs and nuances of 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 the Western system of law have to be explained in pretty simple terms to the Japanese people, as this is how this is how law should function. So this is why it's really good. Like like, there's a few things in here that leapt out at me that surprised me. But it's really, really good to look at the Japanese constitution, especially in English, and just to see, oh, well, if it's true in Japan, and the Americans essentially were, were, par you know, were partners in writing and uh, ratifying this, uh, this document, uh, then maybe these could work in our own lands. Hmm, possible that. And maybe they're even stronger. Maybe the rights are even stronger in our own lands, because obviously these are the rights you're giving to your former enemy. So think about that. Anyway, well done for sticking around. I know it was a long one, but learning the law takes time. If you don't put in the hours, you ain't going to keep yourself out of prison or, you know, be on the winning team. <laughs>